My name is Chris and today is all about the iFi Zen Phono Preamp. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! Some of the most consistent questions I'm asked are about Phono Preamps. Which do I like? What's the best? How much should I spend? What's the best for the money? And so on. While I certainly have my personal favorites in just about every category when it comes to this hobby, I'm sometimes hesitant to call things the best. When it comes to sound, what might work for me might not work for you, or moreover, you simply might prefer a different sound. That being said, there are some staples in the hi-fi industry that the majority of audio fans tend to lean toward when making a purchase decision because of their reputation for performance, especially if that purchase falls within a certain budget. Got about 200 bucks for a turntable cartridge? There's a good chance you're looking at a Nagauka MP110 or an Orderphone 2M Blue. Looking to spend about $500 on some speakers? I'd imagine you're in good company when it comes to looking at ELAC, Triangle, and Q Acoustics. So when I get the question about phono preamps and someone is asking about the best budget option, and they usually are, my standard reply has been the shit manny for quite some time. After all, it's an affordable, in my opinion, at $129, it's made right here in the US with quality parts, and it's held its own against a number of more expensive competitors in the arena of sound for quite a while. So when Ricardo at iFi reached out to me to see if I'd like to try out their affordable phono preamp, clearly I had to say yes. With a focus on clean power and complete silence from this phono pre, iFi have clearly focused their attention on the competitors in this price range and have come out swinging. They have added features not usually found at this level, used higher end components not usually found at this level, they have used a build quality not usually found at this level, and they've done it all for a price point that is under $200. This is the iFi Zen Phono Preamp. For those of you who are newer to collecting records, or those who might be getting back in after a lengthy hiatus, you might be wondering why you need a photo preamp and even what they do. After all, several turntables out there have one built in, and your stereo might as well, so do you really need one? Concerning what they do, quite simply, a phono preamp takes the amazingly low signal produced by the turntable and boosts it by a sizable amount before it gets to your amplifier. As for if you need one, well, if your turntable doesn't have a phono preamp built in and neither does your stereo, then yes. But what if your turntable or stereo does? This is where it comes down to a preference. A quality outboard preamp will always sound much better than a built-in one simply because they have more room for the electronics and they are designed and built for a singular purpose. So if you'd like a higher quality sound from your records, yeah, you should pick one up. Is the iFi Zen the one for you? Let's go over some of its features and talk about how it sounds so you can decide for yourself. When taking the aforementioned signal and boosting it to a large degree, you'll be introducing noise and hiss to your sound chain. This is pretty much unavoidable. The trick is for your phono preamp, and to a degree your stereo or amplifier, to weed out as much of this noise as possible before it hits your speakers. The Zen uses a separate island amongst the circuit board, that is to say that it's separated from the other sections of the board, to create a power supply with a superior capacitance filtering capability to reduce as much noise as possible. I compared this noise reduction in the Zen to the dead space sound of the Manny and found that, indeed, the Zen is a noticeably quieter component, especially at lower volumes. When listening to subtle recordings, as I did with one of my test records, the UHQR one-step pressing of Miles Davis's Kind of Blue, this reduction in noise is a much welcomed addition. It's easier to drift off into the music and not be distracted by errant background noise. The Zen also uses a symmetrical dual mono design with its circuitry to reduce crosstalk and noise between the channels, claiming that this increases sonic clarity. While I can't make a direct comparison on that particular feature to another product specifically, I can say that this phono preamp did indeed have sonic clarity in abundance to go along with its slightly warmer tone. It also includes a subsonic feature, which is a bit of a rarity at this price range and quite helpful as well. Using their own unique AI filter, iFi claims it will remove the rumble in these frequencies only and leave all the low end bass on your record for a full sonic performance. Again, I couldn't specifically test this feature against another product, but I can say that with the test records I used, there was certainly no loss of low end when turning the feature off and on again during play. The feature that surprised me the most, however, was the inclusion of a balanced output. 
While iFi used a 4.4 millimeter jack to XLR connection, the fact that this Phono Pre is balanced and has the option for a balanced output at this price point is very impressive. Sadly, my Hagel doesn't have XLR inputs, so I was unable to test the improvement in sound using these connections. Hopefully that will be something I can remedy down the line. For the output options on the Zen, you'll find a selector switch with four built-in options. Moving magnet, moving coil high, moving coil low, and moving coil very low. I'd say this may only be slightly misleading with a moving coil high, because with its 48 dB of gain and the impedance of 47,000 ohms, this setting is what most people might call the standard for a moving magnet cartridge. That being said, the option to select which cartridge you have or which gain setting you'd prefer with a simple switch and let the Zen do the rest was very user friendly, and I can see this being quite welcomed by the newer people in the hobby who aren't as confident yet with the settings they should be using with their cartridge. While I never found the dip switches in the Manny to be confusing, you will probably need to break out the manual once in a while if you're switching cartridges and need to figure out which settings to use. You'll also need to flip the Manny over to use these dip switches, making it a bit more difficult if the unit is already plugged in and hooked up, and you can't switch them on the fly like you can with the Zen. I bounced around the settings quite regularly in the beginnings with the Zen to see which setting worked best with my turntables, and if the change didn't immediately start, I just tapped the power button and the new settings started to engage. All of this is well and good, but how did the Zen sound? Let's take a more involved look at that now. Using my clear audio concept with the Satisfy Black Tone Arm and Mahana ML cartridge, I tried out the two different moving coil settings on the Zen a few times to see which I preferred. Setting 3, which gave me 60 dB of gain, seemed to be the closest to my usual settings on my EAT Eglo Petite. Yes, that review is still forthcoming. While having a gain of 72 dB certainly covers all the bases, I found that this setting was just too hot for my tastes. The first record I put on was the newest installment in the Halloween soundtrack series by John and Cody Carpenter and Daniel Davies, Halloween Kills. There are a wide range of sounds in this album, and I found it a good starting point to see what the Zen could do. I was immediately impressed with the superb stereo separation and imaging. While this was an electronic instrument performance, so soundstage position didn't really come into play as far as depth, it was very easy to hear the width of this recording. Each instrument was easy to identify in its placement. The low notes were clear and deep, and even the higher distorted harsh tones on the album came through with detail and sat on top of the mix, no doubt where they were intended to go. As much as I did like this album, I quickly found myself going over the new Motorhead box set, Everything Louder Forever. This 4LP set covers pretty much every time frame in the Motorhead catalog, and not chronologically either, which is partially what made it so appealing to me. Sure, this isn't what you'd call an audiophile pressing, but you're not going to play one-step pressings on your turntable all the time, so I felt it was a good representation of the Everyman record. With Motorhead being a loud band and many of the instruments taking up the same sonic space, I was impressed with the very solid clarity of the instruments. The drums on the various tracks had different levels of tone and attack, but always sat well in mix and didn't get washed out. The double bass performances, which are paramount on so many of the songs, never get lost and have good depth and punch to the sound. Lemmy's bass tone, which is more akin to a baritone guitar in many regards, was identifiable amongst the different guitarists and guitar tracks over the compilation. This was certainly an accomplishment and showed the capabilities of the Zen. The vocals had a lively presence and seemed to sit up front in space where they should be. Through it all, the soundstage was solid, but it just kept coming back to the imaging and stereo separation for me. The Manny is a very capable performer, especially for the money, but it just didn't have the same dynamics as the Zen. With that in mind, I wanted to really test the scope of the Zen to see what it could do, so I spent the remainder of my time on the concept turntable listening to the one-step pressing of Kind of Blue. If there was an album in my collection that could showcase dynamics, surely this was it. Right away, the bass tone and texture easily came through. Yes, you'd expect that from a turntable and cartridge in this price range, but if the preamp can't successfully relay that intricate sound to the amplifier, it really doesn't matter how fancy your turntable setup is. The Zen impressed me here with its ability to showcase the superb quality of this album. Every instrument was well balanced, taking up the space needed for clarity, but never being overbearing or more glaringly blatant than the other instruments in similar frequencies and tone. Jimmy Cobb's subtle strikes on the drum were just as apparent as his more powerful ones, and the cymbals were bright and clear with excellent transients. 
I was able to discern the delicate breaths in between notes from the saxophones during the quiet passages, and you could hear the interplay of the instruments in the room and its own sound. This was very apparent when John Coltrane's powerful saxophone solo comes thundering in on the piece Freddie Freeloader and could be heard bleeding through the other surrounding microphones in the room. This show of dynamics was quite impressive, and the Manny just couldn't quite keep up. From there, I changed my listening equipment to something that was closer to the price point of what many people might use with the Zen preamp. With a Vintage Techniques SL D202 turntable, which can be had in good working order for around $250, connected to my Gold Ring E3 photo cartridge, which sells for about $170, I played all the aforementioned records again several times through a pair of Q Acoustics 3030i bookshelf speakers, which retail for about $470 a pair, and an Arcam FMJ A28 integrated amplifier, which was graciously donated to the channel by a viewer after my basement flooded. While I can't represent every budget with the gear I have in home, I feel that between the two setups I put together, this was a solid reference to see how the Zen would perform with equipment closer to its own price range. Once again, the Zen didn't disappoint. In lieu of going over every detail again in regards to the sound characteristics and performance I heard in my clear audio setup, I'll just say that the Zen performed well and the sound was good. Just less so on the more affordable setup. Less bass clarity, but not depth. A smaller soundstage, but still very good stereo separation. Less clarity, but not missing a lot on the top end. If you have more of a mid-tier system, you can rest assured that this phono preamp will perform wonderfully for you. In direct comparison to the shit Manny, I would say that I heard more sizzle and slightly more harsh tones in the Halloween soundtrack specifically, and that the Manny had less dynamics overall. There was less width and depth to the sound, and the vocal performances seemed to match that limitation. The Zen was able to provide more bass and punch than the Manny, which, by comparison, sounded a little thin and cool. Couple this with the noisier background during the silent passages, and the Zen really makes a statement about being the stronger performer. But, as we know, there is no such thing as a perfect product, so what didn't I like about the iFi Zen Phono Preamp? As you can probably gather, not much. This preamp is a very strong performer, especially at its sub $200 price point. The included manual, if you can call it that, was just a smaller double-sided card that listed the functions and details of the unit, but the print was ridiculously small and newer people of the hobby might appreciate a little direction on how to actually hook the unit up. I also don't know that the choice of light blue, almost white LEDs against a background of brushed aluminum was a great choice, as trying to discern what your current settings were in a well-lit room were surprisingly difficult. While I like the subdued lights when listening at night, especially compared to the prison spotlight that passes for an LED on the front of the shit Manny, daytime setup is needlessly hard in your eyes and could do with a little contrast. Lastly, once again, the length of the cord on the power adapter is shorter than I'd like. I'm not sure who set the new standard of cord length in the hi-fi world, but several of the products I've reviewed lately could stand to gain another two feet or so. Not everyone has the luxury of setting up their hi-fi system in direct proximity to a power outlet, and this is an easy fix. Sure, these are all a bit nitpicky, but with the Zen performing so strongly, this is what I have for caveats. In reality, you could probably even look at these detractors in a positive light when you consider how frivolous they are, and they might not be to many of you. So what's my final verdict? If you're in the market for a new phono preamp and you can afford the $189 for the iFi Zen, I can say with confidence that this is the best sounding performer I've heard near this price range. Have I heard every preamp in the range? No. Is the shit Manny now obsolete in this range? Definitely not. But for the extra $60 you spend to buy the iFi Zen, I wouldn't hesitate for a moment as the sonic benefits are worth the upcharge and more. Thank you all very much to my supporters on Patreon for helping me to continue to produce this show, and thank you all very much for stopping by to check out this review, and I look forward to next time.